over. It's McGee. First and tackling well, and there's a free kick to Simpson. Crunched in very hard. Uh, too far forward and I must say there's no lack of spirit about this Rangers side today they were accused of such an absence of such last Saturday at time Caswell it's flowing in the veins again oh there's an opening we're and it's just safe suddenly out of the blue we're creeping right through that enormous gap in the Rangers defense Opting to take it with his right foot, hit it a bit too straight, and it's spun away towards goal, but just to the wrong side as far as Aberdeen are concerned. Willie Miller's there, and that's over. Dougie Bell, Aberdeen missing perhaps the clearest cut chance of the match so far. Shakes his head that time. Khan not running the ball in the air at all. Kinnan. Russell. A lot of space there for McClellan. Watch Miller watching that ball behind him. Gets it to Cooper. Here we go again. A Ray Freeze. Well covered by Rugby. Cooper settling for the corner kick. One of the most attractive elements of the game this afternoon, the challenge between Cooper and Rugby. Swedish internationalist, Robert Fritz. Patterson, he has time. Clark is there. It's off the line. Cooper, I think. Rangers with the pressure really on Aberdeen. Russell. Well, that's a good ball, Clark. Much for the delight of the huge crowd, but Clark can't have been very far away from that. But if we go back to that incident at the goal line initially, Rangers really storming towards goal. And with Leighton way out, the ball was knocked off the line by Cooper. That's a good ball inside, it must be, it's the old McCoist. And if McCoy's has scored harder chances than that before. And really, the Aberdeen defence has been riddled at this stage. Brilliantly slipped through there, and McCoy's angled it just too much. That must have been agony to see the way that finished. Aberdeen far from a settled looking team at the moment. Still always dangerous though, Dougie Bell on the far side and there is Patterson. No, tackling is too quick. Nobody allowed to settle in midfield. That's meant for McGee. He's getting there and it's swoop. That was as near as the McCoy's chance. Grazed the post on the other side. Totally deceiving young David McPherson. And McGee seizing the opportunity. He had to turn it at that very acute angle instantly or else somebody would have come up behind him and it just swerved away. Miller behind him again. What a great game he's having as usual. Kick. Now it's turning into a turbulent match, and uh, referee Jimmy Duncan will have to be quite firm in his discipline. Five minutes of the first half now. Free kick again. 
quite likely. The object of, uh, of about 28,000 supporters' wrath at the moment, I would have thought, to rugby. And as usual, he remains quite implacable. Oh, that's a brilliant save from Weir. There wasn't any time to think about it. Quite automatic response as Weir bulleted in. Big man just stuck it up. Then got the rebound. Marvellous game. John, almost Sandy Clark, Cooper, trying to find McCoy's. The chip not high enough. One minute left of this half. Oh, hacking and pushing and... Well, free kick. Aberdeen's free kick. Pushed. Khan hasn't had much time to settle in this game because uh, both the Rangers central defenders are playing extremely well over that. Nearly slipped by Young McPherson, but he's coming up well after that. It's turned out to be a glorious afternoon in every sense. Cooper. McLeish. And there goes the halftime whistle. And you know, the booze are because I think the Rangers support, which is vast here today, are unhappy with some of the refereeing decisions, but apart from that, if the object of the game is to excite and interest the punter and the terracing, then this has been 100% successful. Okay, we have had goals, but we've had everything else. And that early chance with Peter Weir right through in McCloy, that hitting the keeper at the leg and going clear. And that magnificent effort by Clark with Cooper clearing off the line. And surely Ali McCoy ought to have scored, slipping that ball well wide of late and seeing it hit the post. And then that deceptive ball that went to McGee at the other end, hitting it well towards the far post and it couldn't curl in for him. And then that tremendous free kick and header. Peter Weir storming and brilliant save by McCloy. Look at all that, no goals, but oh dear, what a satisfying afternoon so far. And Rangers in this half will play with a slight wind and the sun, a very strong sun now, at their backs on a day when, after what happened at Tynecastle last week, one of the major features has been the Rangers team spirit responding to the huge support here this afternoon. The game in terms of chance is quite even and I think largely as a result of the way Rangers have picked up their form and their attitude and Robert Prince is hot in that tackle and is a booking for Neil Cooper only 20 seconds into the second half well David Cooper will take this Prince is all right Patterson is up for it and McClelland there's the back header. Russell wild with it. Reading his teeth and annoyance.
Tatterson. Right underneath it. Russell. Clark. Bit too slow. Free kick. Yep. Fritz couldn't get up. Wasn't allowed to. Fritz and Cooper there. Miller. Slightly off balance, but he did get it away. McKinnon. Will McGee's. Control that extremely well. The pass not quite as quite equal to it. Fritz. That's great play by Rangers. Here's Clark. A bit too obvious. Al Cooper. Right to the line, there's a touchback. Leighton has it, though. And it seems to me that backing up Rangers' very solid performance in midfield, they have the only player who seems capable of finding chinks in the tight defences, and that's David Cooper. Full time there. Spick person. Simpson. No shot on. Bit slow in laying it off. That's dangerous. Cooper. Now McGee and a cat get to a good interception there. McCoist. Clark. Prince. Too obvious. Cannot beat Willie Miller as easily as that. Twenty-five minutes of the game left. That's quite late in free kick. Wanted a quick one and got it. Mark McGee. Cooper's in there. Cowan trying to lay it back. It's all a bit frantic yet. Aberdeen with the pressure on. Here's Weir. He tries to kill it. Oh, brilliant effort. And I think in that one moment, he shows exactly what his manager wants from him. Culling it right round beyond everybody, taking everybody by surprise, I may say. And uh, John Hewitt is coming on for Steve Card, who's not really had uh, a terribly effective game. Where? Russell. Well, John Hewitt's done a lot of uh, marvellous inserts for Aberdeen as a, a substitute coming on, scoring dramatic goals. Clark, Coist, a little bit unfortunate. Cooper, Hewitt picks it up. The money by McGee, Patterson is with him. Olsen! McGee right through the feet of McCoy. A great effort by McGee. Swerving his way to the left side of Patterson, but really, McCloy ought to have saved that and went right through 26 and a half minutes gone, and Aberdeen won up. Bank 
Leicester drifting in. All Aberdeen at the moment. Weir. McCloy left it, Ripley. Desperate sliding clears. The ball has gone over. And Rangers at this stage a bit demoralised looking. They played a lot of good football and fought extremely well. And now they're one goal down. So Peter Weir with it. Rigby's in and what a miss. Still won't go. <laughs> and I really do believe it wasn't so much the number of Rangers players there, but the number of Aberdeen players. I mean, count them for yourself. I think it was so off-putting with so many people getting the choice of putting it in the back of the net. Turning this time. Patterson. Now McClellan. Kinnan. Different looking Aberdeen team now. The runs are coming off. Finding the men like that. McGee. There's shirt offside by about a yard. Rangers trying to substitute. McPherson and Fritz coming off. Redford and McDonald on. On to McGee. Dawson. Bell. Here's Weir. That was it. Well, now, before we get to our interview with Willie Miller, just a word or two about the remarkable scenes that took place outside Ibrox after the game when a crowd gathered at the main entrance to the stadium and made it clear in no uncertain manner that they have had enough with the downward trend at Ibrox. Now, they may or may not be representative of the Ibrox support as a whole, and indeed some of the chants were distasteful in the extreme. The sounds were ugly, and we can well do without that sort of thing in football, but on the other hand, they can hardly be lightly ignored. It was the choral evidence of pent-up frustration of a support who turned up massively today to give incredible backing to a team who were again shown to be less accomplished than the opposition. The message was driven home in the most bitterly ironic way, for in fact, Rangers played as well as I've seen them all the season, although they were still short of that thrust that will win them things. Now, when a 30,000 crowd turns up to watch a side that is still to win a league game, it's all you need to know about what they mean to the finances of Scottish football. Well, the Rangers board has in fact been enormously loyal to their manager, not without reason, for nobody can question John Gregg's unswerving devotion to a club he's been with since he was 16, but the results are not coming, and neither in the future will the paying customers going on like that. Rangers have no divine right to be the commanding club in Scotland, but the absence of their fans will wipe the smiles from the faces of many a club treasurer, and that's no funny matter nowadays. Just ask one of you know them. 
Well, if the way ahead for Rangers is unclear, it certainly doesn't seem to be for the Aberdeen captain, Willie Muller, man of the match, and he talked to me after the game. Congratulations on being man of the match. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed the game, did you? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, a good game. A lot of uh, goal mouth incidents and two teams going forward and looking for a win. Mm. Did you, were you, were you rather surprised by the spirit that Rangers showed? Because they were criticised even by John Gregg last week for lack of spirit at Tynecastle. Well, they always seem to have a real go at us down here. Uh, as I said, it probably suited us a bit better them coming out and having a real go at us. Uh, we enjoy playing against teams who try to beat us. The Rangers certainly done that today. Yeah, now your manager has flayed you, has he not, over the past week. He criticised you at Mullerwall, maybe not without reason. Uh, suddenly, this transformation. Does it work when he goes at you like that? I don't know. I think we like a big occasion. We like playing in front of big crowds. Uh, we come down to Parkhead and Ibrox and we always do well down here. I think it's more uh, the big atmosphere that we enjoy rather than the manager fleeing us. Mm. Well, it certainly responded to the players, and particularly Mark McGee. The two goals he took were, I suppose, typical of the opportunism of him. Yeah, that's Mark, as he says. That's the type of goals he does score. Uh, it hasn't been uh, doing that well recently, but I'm sure the two goals today will uh, give him plenty of confidence, and I'm sure he'll go from strength to strength. Do you think there might have been a goalkeeping error in the first goal? I don't know, it's hard to say. I'm at the other end of the park at that time. Uh, all I saw was Mark getting onto the ball and just hitting it first time. Maybe it took Peter by a wee bit of surprise mm. and it sneaked in at the near post. Well, Peter Weir certainly came back to his best, particularly in the second half and late in the second half. That was an immaculate cross, wasn't it, for the second? Now, Peter played well, as you said. He was going up to the full back and, and taking him on, and that's really what we're looking for from Peter. And uh, when he's in that form, he's unstoppable, really. Mm. Your um, favourites amongst many people to win the championship, Now I know it's uh, early doors, but do you feel things are moving that way, moving right for you, despite that lapse at Motherwell last week? As you say, it's, it's too early to start making predictions. I, I think we're equipped to do well in the... Uh, title race. We've got a, a large pool, a lot of good players. I think uh, we're probably the best equipped team in the country to do it, but uh, it's up to us to do it. It's up to us to win games and uh, we'll be taking it from here early in the season, hopefully right through to the last uh, kick of the ball. And such as a noise at Parkhead, I think it's going to be very difficult uh, hearing Bob Valentine's whistle. Perfect day for football. You couldn't ask for better. The pitch in a, a brilliant condition. And the game of the utmost importance of all clubs. Paul McStay in any position in the penalty, but using that right arm of his. There's Neil Cooper. I didn't think uh, Cooper was totally convincing on Wednesday night in Berlin. I thought they could have got a little bit more out of him going forward in particular. Whipped away by Reed. Now Miller comes forward. That's a very good ball indeed. Angus. Oh, it's a brilliant one. Great play set up by the Aberdeen captain from midfield. And he never shucks the responsibility of coming forward at the right moment. And what a superb ball he gave. And that, even though he was going off balance, was superbly put in there by Angus and Reed, conceding the corner. Dougal can't quite get there. Zalek McLeish, Simpson, and off target. And all that pressure came from that very intelligent counter-attack using the principal Aberdeen defender as the basis of it. Well, a good clearance, and up comes McLeod with the shot, and that'll be a corner. Ball coming off for Kimmy, and Mother McLeod back in midfield, I think getting over his serious injury. That must be a plus for Celtic if he gets back to form. Well, it's a good ball and it's just over. That really bothered Aberdeen as they were last Wednesday night. 
that cross ball I think has been a tendency for them this season and none of the Aberdeen defenders could get to it that just went so narrowly over Gray not cleanly and Cahoon has to come back does a neat little piece of retrieving oh, a little too obvious and away goes McLeish he's wanting to part with it though Stark here's McKinnon